Hey everyone, this is part 4 in the ESP32 Automated Irrigation Control System Series. If you're first joining us now, click the link up here in the top right, we'll take you to the playlist. You can click on the first link, or whatever link you left off from, and continue from there. In the last video, we added the relay board which would control the solenoids, designed the master class and integrated all the other classes within it, poured through tons of code and flowcharts, conducted practical demonstrations along the way, finally demoed all of the components working within the object together. This includes the interrupt running off of our water meter emulator. In this video, we're going to switch over to hardware, move everything from the breadboard into the box. We also have a couple new components we're going to add. We have a lot of work to do, so let's get started. I have this black sheet of textured vinyl I'll use throughout the project. It'll be used first for the perimeter of this box. This will be the outside cover. have to fit just in this lip, so it'll be carefully sanded and cornered to align to it. I really took my time to get the sizing of this as perfect as possible. And after much off-camera work, we're going to seat it in right now, just for fitment purposes. See how it looks. And yeah, came out real nice. Very happy with that. So good, in fact, I actually can't get it out. I'm going to have to use a razor blade to pull this out. Also have these threaded rods in 1024. They're one foot a piece. However, these are four mil holes. And I don't have any 4 mil threaded rods, this is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to turn these down to 4 mil just at the ends. It's part of the plan and the finished product. These aren't actually designed to be removed from the box, so this will be just fine. But these two rods will be in support of the top cover. Got the second piece of plastic. I've cut the size, and this will serve as a mounting plate. None of these holes are threaded. I do have to enlarge them. I do have M4 inserts that I can put in. I just load it onto the threaded rod, and then I just tap it right in. There are some extra ones. Those were the test holes that I did first. I'm going to load four tall standoffs into the box now. I'm going to paint these. It didn't occur to me yet to cover them with tape before I painted them, but live and learn. So now I had taped this up and I taped the handle on top. Make sure everything's centered and just get it perfectly situated. Press it down onto the four standoffs. And then once it's down, I'm going to hold it and then press down these corners to make sure I got good contact with that paint and then lift it up from the handle. Turn it around, and there's my four marks. These marks will then be drilled out. We'll slide it in. We'll try out a test fit. Fits perfect. Now I get the total width of this piece, so I could then divide it by two. Use that to give myself a center line along the length of the plastic. Measure from the center of the two top inserts from the center insert. And then transpose that onto our plastic. Do the same thing on the other side as well. And use those marks to cut out holes for our threaded rod. Now everything fits. Just like that. Quick test with all four screws and both rods in. Everything is aligned. Very good. Now I'll be adding a liquid power cable fitting with stress relief and M12. I've cut a hole to support it. It's in the left corner. So we'll just run it through. Tighten the nut. That's it. These are pretty easy to install. Brought the AC power over as the first thing from the breadboard. We'll just run it through right now. Take a length of it. As it's tightened down, it'll secure the entire wire into place, so it'll provide stress relief. With that, the AC power cables are now secure, and our first component is installed in the box. I then added in my AC to DC converter with a 5 volt output, as well as a small cross connect. Cut the size and wired in. I then add the double pole relay, which is in support of the valve. 
I'm using an ESP32 breakout board for this installation. I've already drilled holes for the standoffs. It's gonna sit over the relay and the AC to DC converter to save space. We'll conduct a quick test fit. I don't know if this is gonna be the final elevation. It's just gonna be the elevation for now to ensure that we have minimum clearance required. This seems to clear fine. We'll move on to next step. I've now added in the power supply that drives the valve. And for fitment check right quick, we're just gonna lay it into the box. And this is the approximate location of where the LCD screen is going to go. More of the low level AC wiring has been done and cut to size as we see. Also some DC. But I've had to mount this in place to get an exact location of these posts that I've put in. And this will be where the relays are going for the solenoids. This time I've put tape where I'm painting so I don't have to clean them up later. Using the same technique I make a handle, get the right location for the plastic piece that I've cut out and then I press it down to make the mocks so I know exactly where I have to drill. So now I press each individual one to ensure that the mock is good. And when they're all full good, I'm gonna lift it off really quick. There they are. And I can just remove the tape with the paint on it without wasting any parts. The holes are drilled and this piece should line up. The quad relay board for the solenoids will go right here. In position is now affixed to the board, screwed in. And this is what we got before I make minor corrections and adjustments to straighten things out. My weatherproof multi-pin plugs have arrived. This is a six pin. I've drawn a center line, set a pilot. Went ahead and installed the first connector. This is the one for the valve. I use five of the six pins. And then I installed the second one. It's a two pin one and that's for the water meter. I shifted everything over as I realized the first holes for the liquidite coming from the solenoids from the yard. And the new connectors got cables attached, five on one, two on the other. There's still room on the right for one more connector in between the two. And I dropped the main board back in to recheck for fitment. Picked up an ESP32 dev kit C that fits the breakout board. I picked this one up on Mauser. It actually has an external antenna on it as you see. So there's a wire that wraps around. It's actually convenient for this box because I wanted an external antenna. The small antenna comes out the bottom mounted as shown right over here. I really didn't know how an onboard antenna would work when the box is closed. And all this topside wiring you see here connected to it and everything else above here. This is all just temporary. Make sure everything's working before I put the permanent wiring in. All this too as well. And the blue wire right over here. This is not actually connected right now. This was just used to load the firmware onto it. I saw no need to remove it. We have our screen connected. I'll hit reboot now. We'll try it out. I'm not going to get too much into the software right now. That'll be for another video. But we do see it booting. We do see it connecting right now. It has connected. And I do have a routine that is going to test. We can see it's testing out the solenoids in that routine. Everything seems to be working. That routine was added just for this demonstration. We're going to try factory default now. This cable is connected to a process, and when it detects that it's connected to the ground for more than five seconds, it'll delete all the config files and reboot, bringing the device back to a factory default state. So we'll do that now. The box is now factory defaulted. It now needs to be reconnected to the network connecting using the Wi-Fi config framework as I've demonstrated in a video shown here in the top right. Now I'll speed ahead and put a configuration back onto it with the GUI. We can see that the diagnostic is running again now that a configuration has been reinstalled onto the system. This cable's GPIO is going to have to be connected to a button mounted on this board up here so that it can be pressed through a small hole that can be reached from the top cover. Taking a small square from my spare pieces, I want to round off the edges so I don't have any sharp edges that will get caught on any pin that's going through the cover. So I can use my Dremel here, make a circle out of it, roughly a circle. That should do it. We're boring a hole here to seat the head of the button. It'll fit in something like this. 
I'm going to scuff it up a little bit for maximum adhesion with the epoxy I'm going to use. Now it's obvious here that the goal is to glue both of these pieces together, accomplishing my mission, and all this looks really good. I'm really getting ahead of myself as I set this off to dry. As I move on to finish the wiring, I had to rip off this top piece because once you put it on, there's no way to screw on the button through the board, it's through hole. So I ripped that off and we're gonna put it back on later once I drill a hole through this board. It's gonna sit like that, right over here. So now I'll set up a pilot. And we'll drill a hole to install the button properly. And there it is, now we can glue the cap back on. While the glue was drying, I redid all of the cabling, making it nice and orderly on all levels. Removing the headers and directly soldering cables onto the relay board, as well as leads onto the reset switch. Reconnected everything for a quick test, and everything worked on diagnostic. Onto the outer cover, I measured the width so I could make a center line, then took a distance from the box lip to the middle of the rod. On the center line, I annotated this distance, and that's where I drilled the hole. That same distance was drilled on both sides. As we seat the cover down, it's perfect fit. The rods fit through perfectly without binding on each side. Using another device with the same screen, I take a measurement of the width of the screen. I see 75 millimeters. Width is 25 millimeters, and I'm purposely rounding down. Offset of the circuitry up top is just over 10 millimeters. That makes this area right here a no-go zone for washers and whatnot. And this is what I mean, washers that may stabilize the back of this cover. Taking that into account, I scribe the top line of the screen. Add 25 to that 40 millimeter offset to get the bottom line of the screen. Scribe that line in. Now I'm at half the screen width, 37.5. I initially messed this up, but I caught myself. I'm supposed to take a reading from the center line and then figure out what that reading is from the edge. So I'm doing that now. So now I'm scribing half a 75 from the edge. And half a 75 from the other edge, just have to be sure to use the inner lines. Now we see from the middle, 37.5, 37.5, perfect. This entire area is perfectly centered and a fraction of a millimeter smaller than the screen. Everything about cutting out the square with a razor sucked, but I didn't want to use an electric tool and risk damaging anything. So it took about 20 minutes of scoring with a razor till this became loose enough to pop out. And you can see it fatiguing on the other side but it did eventually pop out. I will have to clean up as I chamfer it. And I got the chamfering mostly done. I'm holding the screen behind it, roughly in position to see how it looks. More chamfering is done and it's looking even nicer. I'm affixing double face tape where I can to the face of this display and it's going to assist me in the next step. It's not gonna be permanent. It's gonna allow me to get this thing into position and hold it into position while I work with it. So I'm just trying to center it now. Everything is leveled. The back has the adequate clearance I'm looking for. I'll double check the front one more time. And I've drilled three millimeter holes through the board, through the front as we see. And now with those holes drilled, I can remove this and the double face tape. I'll clean everything up. The three millimeter holes will be threaded to four millimeter. And that will fit the exact size standoff I need. These standoffs are put in with blue Loctite. The board is screwed in, and on the other side, we can see the standoff sticking out the front. I've already sliced off the first one flush. I'll have to do the others. It'll only require some light percussion and some heavy grit sandpaper to texture them. This is an encoder and button combination knob I'm adding to the project. I'm going to be placing it right over here. Measured right off the center line as I check for clearance. I have drilled a hole and installed the knob in its final position. However, I had to annotate the connections with a piece of tape. As we get back to software in the next chapter, we'll be adding functionality to this knob and button. Wired up and put off to the side, ready for installation. We can see that as the relay is energized, the two right positions become shorted together. This will be the basis of the next portion of our installation. AC voltage will be daisy chained across the center pins of all these relays, where it will then come down and feed all of the solenoids over here. This relay closure will be controlled entirely by software. The first power change will be the addition of a two amp breaker. It's not too big, but I can't put it here on the bottom. There's too much going on here. So what I'd like to do is put this up top here out of the way. I'll just run some cable to support it. Right over here is a good fit. A hole is drilled and the breaker is installed. 
For these connections, I'll be using a thicker gauge cable and solder leads onto the breaker. We could see hot make its way up through the breaker and down into the distribution panel. Protected makes its way up and around through the systems. This cable will come up and meet the relays. Everything is slowly assembled back together. I pre-cut jumpers. Here's our AC. Making its way to the first relay and jumper, to the second, and then to the third. I forgot my neutral, so I had to go back in and add it. If you look quick, you can see 28 volts flash on the multimeter when it clicks onto the fourth relay. Again, I got ahead of myself and wired the front cover to the internals of the box, but I had forgotten to measure the distance for the center of this button right here. So I measured it, marking the reference with a razor blade. And then I marked a reference on this ruler from this direction. And then I was able to measure this two millimeter gap as well. Came up with a button center of 34.7 by 95. Using the calipers, I scribed a center point and drilled a small hole to accommodate a paper clip. I had to drill from the inside, so I scraped away the rest. Now I'll close the box and we're gonna try it out. Using this piece of wire thicker than the paper clip, it's no problem to hit that button. So this works just fine. I'll fix a reset label now. I could probably make a straighter one later. You know, drill a quick hole through the label, through the hole. And there we go, reset button. With all the new components and changes, we now have our latest wiring diagram. Plugged in my firmware connectivity USB cable and only have one solenoid. So I've got these industrial lamps. They're good for 30 volts AC. So I've started adding some pigtails to it and I'm gonna use these in place of the solenoids as an indicator and plug them right into here. They're a nice bright green color. added more flexible cables onto my water meter emulator. We'll wire it into its plug. Now modular we could connect it right up. The interrupts for this still go out to serial for testing purposes. We'll have a look. Yeah, and it appears to be working fine. I've wired up the five wire water valve into this connector. We could plug it in now. The very fact that it's opening when I plug it in tells me that two of the wires are backwards. I'll go in and fix it, no problem. I've added open and close to the diagnostic with a check on the sensor for open and close. We'll see how it works. It fully opened and open was correctly sensed. Fully closed and closed was correctly sensed. So that's it for chapter four of this ESP32 sprinkler project. We pretty much covered all the hardware we got all these pieces together and integrated, even the button addition, pretty cool. Threaded rod's gonna wait because we're still getting into the box right now, I'll do that later. And I still got my firmware cable coming in from the bottom. Also, we've got our lights and mounting holes that still need to be going into the box. It has been a fantastic chapter in this project. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. When the next video comes out in the series, a link will be posted in the top right corner. I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>